Mel Gibson has been buying up and selling homes in the global real estate market for most of his life. He's owned and lived in a handful of unique properties from an old world mansion in Malibu to a tropical hideaway in Costa Rica and even an entire island at Fiji at one point. In 2019, Mel listed his stunning Malibu estate. There is no records showing that it's sold. This property boasted five beds, five baths, a French country kitchen, an airy living room with rustic wood details and much more. While outside the grounds had two pools as well as a gym. However, over the last few years, the actor and director has offloaded most of his properties or at least listed them for sale. So where he's living right now as his main residence is a little bit of a mystery. We're gonna kick things off with Mel's Malibu mansion, which had a notably old world vibe to it. This one might just be my favorite. In 2019, this property resurfaced on the market for $14.5 million after Mel had tried to sell it before in 2017 for 17.5 million to no avail. As far as we know right now, there are no records of the mansion being sold, so one could assume that Mel still owns it. This estate has a unique stone brick, stucco, and wood clad exterior, and it's set behind an electric gate as well as a thick wall of trees and greenery on nearly five and a half acres of land. The manor is tucked away in the canyons above the ocean in Malibu, California, and Mel picked it up in 2008 for $11.5 million from then married actors David Duchovny and Taylor Leone. One thing this mansion surely isn't lacking is character. There are exposed wood beams all over and stone archways to add even more charm. Inside there's 6,578 square feet of space with five bedrooms and 4.5 baths along with many spaces to entertain. A long driveway leads up to a classy motor court and attached garage with guest quarters over top. There's also an additional guest house and pool house with fitness center on the property. This home was built in the mid 1990s, but has since acquired plenty of updates and there are a ton of old world architectural details inside too, not to mention some religious artwork. The wood and glass front doors open right into a towering great room with double height and and exposed beam ceilings, more archways, and a bank of windows with diamond pane glass. This room also boasts a giant fireplace with carved wood crosses and rosary beads, as well as a rustic iron chandeliers overhead. There's also an office tucked into a nook of windows and nearby an airy dining room with space for plenty of guests. The French country kitchen is attached to the great room, also offering top grade appliances and bar style seating. And elsewhere, there's a library study with classic built in wooden bookcases and another fireplace. A wood paneled family room in Mel's former home has a cozy feel with rough stone fireplace and further opens via French doors to the yard. What appears to be the master suite has a built in long window seat with leather cushions as well as French doors to a sunroom with a mix of reclaimed wood and stone walls. This bedroom also has a stone fireplace and so does at least one other guest bedroom in the manor. Both of these bedrooms have their own large ensuite baths which also offer indulgent soaking tubs. We can't forget the spiral staircase which appears to be located in the home's turret, a feature which I really love here. Out back there's a partly shaded al fresco dining space and this leads to a magical path which is lit up and winds through the trees to a multi-level terrace. This terrace is set into the hillside while there are also two swimming pools, one of which is a full regulation lap pool in addition to a freestanding spa and the aforementioned pool house that boasts a gym. Not only did the property pack in the charm, it also came with rights to the exclusive members only La Costa Beach and Tennis Club. And if you're wondering how exclusive it really is, membership fees spent a wild $100,000 with about 700 in yearly dues. While Mel has owned homes all around the world, the native New Yorker returned to the Northeast in the mid 90s after buying a remarkable property in Greenwich, Connecticut, only 45 minutes away from his hometown of Peekskill, New York. Gibson bought the home in 1994 for $9.3 million and went on to live there for 15 years before selling the residence in 2010 for $24 million. Built sometime between 1925 and 1927 by award-winning architect Charles Lewis Bowman, Bowman for a banker and veteran pilot, Charles L. Ostrom. Colonial Tudor style mansion features a 
stone exterior accented by stunning greenery. Sitting on almost 76 acres of well-kept land, the grounds include multiple fountains, flower gardens, and hiking trails, as well as an orchard and dock access to a small lake. Inside this mansion boasts over 15,800 square feet and consists of eight bedrooms and 21 bathrooms, 14 of which include a tub and shower. Originally named the Old Mill Farm, Mel Gibson renamed the mansion Wayne Manor as an homage to the DC Comics character Bruce Wayne, who the actor almost played in the 1989 film Batman. Gibson also added a few modern amenities to this house, including air conditioning and an upscale theater with emerald green velvet chairs. The mansion is full of rich and traditional Elizabethan thin architectural features such as oak paneled walls, intricate woodwork, 40 foot vaulted ceilings, and beautiful stained glass windows. Some of the many impressive rooms included two dining areas, a double chef's kitchen, a study, and a master suite, while there was also a tavern-like basement level below. The property boasted a tree-lined circle driveway, two greenhouses, a tennis court, a 60 foot swimming pool, as well as plenty of patio space for lounging in the sun. Along with the historic mansion and its stunning grounds additional structures on the property serve as guest houses including a fairy tale stone cottage that offers a whopping eight bedrooms on its own. Guests also have the option of staying in the charming and rustic log cabin tucked into the nearby woods or in another ivy covered home which is next to the spacious horse barn. These days, the property houses the philanthropic organization Foundation House, which was created by neighbor Mimi Sternlicht in 2019 to preserve it. Mel is also said to own several spots in Costa Rica, one of which came up for grabs somewhat recently, this 400 acre beachfront paradise. This jungle getaway has been on the market for a whopping $29.5 million, and it's located in the northwestern part of Costa Rica in Nosara. Mel purchased this beautiful estate on the Nicoya Peninsula in 2007 after discovering it a year prior while they were scouting locations for his action adventure movie Apocalypto. This estate was originally built in 2002, and all of the buildings were made eco consciously to reduce their impact on the surrounding land. Landscape. Mel's one-of-a-kind retreat is located on a hilltop consisting of three luxury villas of different sizes and set in the jungle for privacy. Throughout the home, there's 12 bedrooms and 14 baths, along with generous and comfortable living spaces. Properties all have the same design aesthetic with terracotta, coral stone exteriors and interiors, which blend Costa Rica inspired design with Spanish and Italian elements such as the tiles. The buildings have a relaxed atmosphere with plenty of glass doors doors and windows for natural light. Each structure has a generous layout with living areas boasting vaulted ceilings, full gourmet kitchens, and multiple terraces, views of the ocean and jungle. The largest of the villas, Casa Guanacaste, is stacked with seven bedrooms and eight baths, while the complex wraps around a central courtyard. Casa Barrigona has two beds, three baths, and a cottage by the pool, while Casa Dorada offers two beds, three baths, and a loft. Other amenities on this stunning estate include private swimming pools, barbecue stations, and more. The tropical getaway also has access to a secluded white sand beach in the Pacific Ocean for the ultimate escape. Despite the privacy, you could access Mel's former property by car, or if you prefer, there's a grass helipad for arriving in style. When it comes to the location, the Nicoya Peninsula is situated on the laid back northern Pacific coast of Costa Rica, which is best known for dazzling white sand beaches and the untouched touch jungle. It's full of solitude and serenity as well as wildlife like sea turtles, howler monkeys, tropical butterflies, hummingbirds, and more. It's fantastic for swimming, surfing, and snorkeling, and simply just unwinding. For those who crave a little bit of civilization, the property is located close to town where there's a spread of hotels, stores, bars, and restaurants. Now that we've looked at a few of movie star and director Mel Gibson's homes over the years, that will wrap up today's house tour. But before we go, answer this question for me. If you could get a vacation home in any South American destination, which would it be? Let me know your pick down in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me over on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer and I'll see you all in another house tour. Bye.